say what's up? Shake? Shake? Good shake. Yeah. What's up, weirdos? My name's Paul. This is my 2007 GMC Savannah. Why don't you come check it out? I usually get into the vehicle through the front. I rarely use the back. Right now it's in travel mode. So I have the Queen Murphy bed up and the sofa made. Underneath there's some storage, all my camping gear and electrical stuff, wiring, that sort of thing. For the flooring, I used 100% PVC plastic Life brand from Home Depot. The flooring also has two inches of rigid foam insulation, a layer of Reflectix, and then the PVC flooring. Same with the walls and ceiling. It all has two inches of rigid, rigid foam insulation and Reflectix, and then various types of plywood. Over on the passenger side as we enter, on the bottom I have my electrical system, which comprises of two Tesla Model S lithium-ion modules. In a Tesla, there's usually 16 of these. So I'm running 10 and a half kilowatts of lithium right now. They're joined at the switch here, which allows me to disable or utilize just one of the packs at a time, which then goes to a fuse block. And then that goes out to either a 12 volt converter 3000 watt inverter charger or down to here there's a sterling dc dc charger coming from the battery alternator and my solar mppt controller so i have 2100 watts of solar on the roof lg 350 watt panels and i have six of them with the sterling dc charger and the solar i have about 100 amps of 24 volt charging as I drive. Over here I have my six foot desk with a full size keyboard piano and a 65 inch curved 4K TV which I use for video editing and watching videos. I use a Roland FP60X which is a full weighted realistic piano keyboard. And this TV might seem big for you but it's the perfect size for this space as I'm laying in bed or lounging on the couch. Typically when I edit videos, I would actually sit on the edge of the bed and work. This is a solid piece of oak that I had glued up and carved. I also designed this in 3D off of the Sons of Anarchy TV show and carved it using my CNC router, which I used to have. I also modeled this wolf and his cub in 3D and carved this out of solid maple. Here I have some light switches and my Vectron battery monitor. As you can tell, it always seems to be fully charged having this much solar. As we work our way back, on the passenger side I have ample storage. All my clothing, my guitar, paperwork and electronics. And in the bottom box I have my bedding blankets, my pillows, and my weights. On the driver's side, I have a full three foot by three foot shower stall with glass door. I opted not to have a toilet because I didn't want to carry around waste. And instead I use a toilet pretty much everywhere there's one available on the road. Having an ensuite shower was definitely important to me, especially during the pandemic, as it's pretty hard to find a shower, whereas you can find a toilet anywhere. Continuing back, I have a 12, 24 volt unique DC powered fridge. It's nine cubic feet in total. 
I only wish the freezer was bigger because I primarily use that. Some random magnets of the road and a picture of my kids. Above the fridge I have some storage, all my toiletries, vitamins, and board games. I installed my tool chest with every single power tool, wrench, socket, you name it, I've got it on the road. Above there's a four foot countertop made out of bamboo and another a little butcher block that I made out of solid maple. Got my kettle, my bananas, all the essentials here for making coffee and quick snack on the road. Now this Breville is amazing. It's a cubic foot air fryer. So it'll, I mean, you could fit, I've, I've cooked pizzas in here. You can fit a full turkey or chicken if you wanted to. Make some cookies. I have my pots and pans, my blender, cooking supplies. On the back, I have a full-sized steel entry door that's insulated. I had to slice off a bit at the top and bottom to fit in this space. I rarely use this door. This is mostly just to get in and out or if I want some fresh air. Eventually, I will replace this with a Dutch door, which is basically a top half and a bottom half that can open independently. And then I've got a 15-foot telescoping ladder. These are essential on the road, especially if you're dealing with solar or roof vents or anything. On the driver's side of the kitchen, I have a larger bamboo cooktop. This was actually cut out from the sink and a full sink that runs off a 12 volt pump and 40 gallons of water storage. Underneath here, I'm trying to utilize as much storage space as I can over the water tank. And then I've got my on-demand 120 volt water heater, which is fantastic. I paid about $50 for this 1800 watt induction burner, which is more than I need. On the wall here, I have a brushed aluminum panel and a clear acrylic mirror that I had left over from a previous job. And then above here, I have all my food, my dry goods. On the ceiling, I installed these LED puck lights and they run independently, so there's three zones in total. And then over here I have just enough room for my brooms and coat rack. Now over here, I actually designed it with a split. So this will lift up, giving this open space where I actually originally had a washing machine. I brought a one cubic foot RCA apartment-sized washing machine with me, but the problem was I never used it, so I ended up leaving it in storage and instead brought all my DeWalt bolt storage with me. These really come in handy. Hey, what's up weirdos? My name's Paul. I'm originally from Ottawa, Ontario, but drove across Canada a couple years ago to move to BC. This is my 2007 GMC Savannah. It's a six liter cutaway van. And uh, I've been traveling across North America with my dog, Peanut. She's a two year old Australian Shepherd that I got from uh, a really close friend back in Ottawa as a therapy dog. I originally purchased this as a moving truck when I lost my home and had to move everything into storage. I, 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 uh, I put a bit of money into fixing it up, getting it safety in order to resell it, but couldn't get back what I put into it. So after a few months, I decided I'd convert it to live in it full time. So it took me four months to build it out. I did it on a, a very strict budget. I, uh, I had no money at the time, no savings. I ended up selling off 98% of my possessions, including my workshop tools. With a bit of help from COVID relief, I put a bit of money into fixing this up so I can live in it full time. The majority of my budget went into the battery system because I knew traveling would be difficult to find plug-in power and I didn't want to rely on anyone. I wanted to be self-sustainable and be able to boondock as much as possible. For the past couple of years, I've been relying on the DC charger to charge my lithium batteries as I drive. But just recently, I purchased six 350 watt LG solar panels off Marketplace for a very good price. I run everything off electricity, so I don't run anything off of gas or propane. I could be using my cooktop, uh, an air conditioner, my computer, 
all day long and by the morning I'm completely charged up again as long as there's a decent sunshine. So, so far it's been really great. The majority of the building supplies that I put into it, the plywood, the hardwood, the bamboo countertops, were all materials that I had in storage. Uh, I used to own a workshop back in Ottawa making signs and furniture. So the majority of the materials were left over from various projects and jobs that I had over the years. It's amazing what you can do with very little money. You don't need to have a big budget when you build out a van, especially something the size that I have. It's 128 square feet of living space. It's basically 16 foot long by eight by seven feet tall. I'm six foot three, so having the seven foot ceiling height has been great. This, even, even though there's two inches of insulation on top and bottom, plus the flooring and plywood. I just turned 40 years old, celebrating by myself on my, my journey out here to the United States. And for the majority of my life, I didn't do a lot of traveling. I had my own businesses, took care of the family, lived the, the regular domestic life for almost 20 years. And unfortunately in 2017, I lost my family. It wasn't my choice. I haven't been able to see my kids for a couple of years, which it's been a couple of years since I've, I've seen my boys. They're turning 11 and 13 this year, and not a day goes by where I don't miss them and think about them. I had no choice but to, to leave an emotionally abusive relationship, and I couldn't handle all the family law stuff. So it was a very difficult decision for me to, to leave town, to be able to start to at least attempt to start a new, a new life for myself, to be able to travel, to experience the things I never experienced before. Driving across Canada to the West Coast was a big part of that journey. I sold 98% of my possessions, put everything I had left into this box truck and made my way out west to BC. I spent the last year and a half or so traveling around Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands trying to make friends during a, a very difficult time when COVID is at the rise and nobody wants to leave their homes or interact without a mask or some restriction. So it's been quite challenging, but as things have eased up and the borders reopened, I made the decision to continue moving around and explore the US. I, I've barely seen what North America has to offer. Uh, it's, it's only been in the last couple of years that I've really traveled. 2018, I had a two and a half week trip across Europe by myself. Went from Paris to Barcelona, to Rome, to the UK, and then back to Paris before I headed, headed back to Ottawa. And that ignited the travel bug in me, and I really wanted to see the world. Then in early 2019, I took a motorcycle trip from Ottawa to Chicago and traveled across Route 66 all the way to, to California and then up to British Columbia and Calgary. And that was my first time ever on the west coast of North America and seeing BC. Once I saw BC and just how amazing the people were and how amazing the scenery and the temperature was, I, I realized I, I needed to move there. It was far superior than you know, growing up in a government town in, in Eastern Canada. Once the pandemic hit, it, I kind of hunkered down and did my best to find places to park, to get a bit of work, to keep myself busy. And uh, once the borders opened up, I took my chance and decided to head south. I'm mostly a hobo, traveling from town to town, waking up to a different front yard every day. The majority of my expenses has been fuel um, and a little bit of food and vehicle maintenance along the way. So keep my costs extremely low. It doesn't really take much to live off of when you're driving around. You have everything you need. You don't have to worry about power or paying rent or property taxes or utility fees. It's really just gas and water and food. That's all and, and insurance. Throughout 2017 and 2018 I lost my family and sunk into a, a deep depression for a couple of years. I gave up my, my work, walked away from my home and finances uh, and 
really struggled to be able to have shared custody with my own children. I certainly never in a million years would have expected the injustice of family law and court and how, and, and, and it took me a while to learn that I had been lied to and gaslit and made to feel crazy when all I was trying to do was provide and take care of my family. So living, traveling solo has been extremely difficult, but thankfully I've got my, my dog Peanut who keeps me company. I don't think I would have done it without her. And I'm doing my best to, to meet strangers and, and make new friends along the way. This experience throughout the United States has been amazing. Uh, the uh, the people who I've met have have invited me in. They've uh, they've treated me to dinner. They've taken me on some amazing adventures and really shown their their generosity and hospitality. So from the bottom of my heart, uh, I thank each and every one of you for for being so amazing. Um, it's something that's definitely appreciated and needed uh, at this point in my life, or you know even in in our time with everything that's going on. Uh, so thank you very much. We all struggle in some way. We've all suffered something in our lives, and it's it's a it's a reminder just to keep keep pushing through it. That you will have good days and bad days, and that's that's life. I find I'm much better behind the camera than I am in front of it. But I did start a new YouTube channel for myself called Wild and Free Adventure. So feel free to check it out if you'd like to follow my journey. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for coming to visit my home. I look forward to bumping into some of you along the way.